And we always like to start our parade with our national anthem. So I was quick running down trying to find a perfect flag. And Harold Miles has the perfect flag on the military jeep there. So everybody, if you can, please rise, remove your hats. And we are going to have the I and I boys sing our national anthem. dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the and the home of the brave. Thank you, guys. We had the full crew here today, Dal. Yesterday, we only had half the IDOT boys. Today, we got them all. And thank you, Harold Miles. He's from Penfield right here. He's had this Jeep for 65 years. I thought now that we want to honor the military and we want to honor the flag, so I thought that was a perfect vehicle to do that. Right here all the way from North Carolina, Mr. Max Armstrong driving the family Armstrong Super H. Max was born the same time that Super H was born. <laughs> there you go. Max Armstrong helps us out all the time here and uh, really appreciate that he can come out here today. So if you folks need to look at him, talk to him a little bit, why, there you go. And then we've got Stan Hardwick driving the Massey 1150, the raffle tractor. This is the raffle tractor. Somebody's going to win this thing Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Now, we sold all the tickets but one, and you can have a chance at that one ticket. We are going to have a raffle on the one ticket, so there's a raffle for the raffle. So if anybody wants to get a hold of, get a hold of Stan, he'll be over there by the windmill by the announcer's booth. So uh, help yourself. Then we've got a little bit unusual tractor here. This here. Hey, Chris or Steve, you want to stop that thing a minute? Hey. That's a Massey 95. It's actually a Minneapolis Moline, and they sold several tractors to, Minne to Massey Ferguson. It, if it was a Minneapolis Moline, it'd be a GB diesel. They sold it as a Massey Ferguson 95. Then we've got a 1979 IH 682 from Farmer City, David Trinkle. Nice little Cub Cadet right there. 1950 Minneapolis Moline Model U, Steve Harriet from Sydney. Lucas Harriet is driving it. He's seven and a half years old, accompanied by Granddad Steve Harriet. Many thanks to Rick Hedrick and Broadland for his help restoring that tractor. Got a Schwartz wide front end on that thing. Nice Moline U. Might have bought that thing brand new down there at Broadlands. There used to be a Minneapolis dealer down there at Broadlands, or else could have got it a shaft implement. 1962 John Deere 4010 Glenn Exington from Kempton 
Got the M and W turbo fan and radiator kit. Boy, you got that thing all painted out. Alice Chalmers, 1939, WC, Hayden Hughes, Tolono, Illinois, Streamline, WC. Then, right behind Hayden Hughes, we have Nolan Miller from Philo. being restored as an FFA project with help from his dad and brothers. All the Millers down there at the Center of the Universe. Speaking of Millers, there's Dickie Miller, Philo, Illinois, just a little bit south of Philo, south of Philo, the Center of the Universe. It says right on the water tower, 1967-190XT. Then we got this yellow 340 utility Lyle and Paulette Brook, Brock, I'm sorry, from Champaign. Lyle Brock got that thing. That's a yellow yellow, isn't it? That's, that not, is, a, that's not an industrial yellow, is it? That is jello, is right. Military version sat in the fence row for the last 30 years. Lyle Brock, south of Champaign, north of Champaign, I'm sorry. There comes Harold Miles with that Jeep again. CJ3. Here's an Alice Chalmers G, made in 1954. Nick Miller and Jessica Hubert own that. Um, Nick Miller is driving it. It's from Roscoe, Illinois. He says the tractor belongs to my wife. <laughs> I made those in Gadsden, Alabama, all to the G's. Then we got Mr. George McManus. Good club member right here. Got that Ford 8 in, so now he can go to all the tractor parades now. He, Pam lets him come. Okay, this is 1954 Oliver Super 88. Kurt Winter from Stewartson, Illinois. They got a big Oliver dealer down there at Stewartson. Tate down there. there and who's this on the fire? There's a nice combination. 1959 560 diesel, Jerry Long. Pam Seifert. Jerry's driving the tractor, just to clarify. From Mantino, Illinois. I like that crawler. That is nice. T4. Then we got another Alice G. Brian and Cindy Eubank from Willow Hill, Illinois. The end of Route 49 down there, Willow Hill. Jasper County, isn't it? I believe you're right there amongst them. 1965 Colt 2510, Brian Eubank from Willow Hill. Then we got that 1984 Cub Cadet. <laughs> a, a 1772 Diesel, Abe Nixon from Cerro Gordo. Uh oh, he got the manure spreader going on that one, Max. Got the spreader. It's a 656 utility, the tractor is. Gail and Linda Rusa from Ipeva. And it's a 1950 100 spreader. It's the only thing that Mr. McCormick wouldn't stand behind. <laughs> 1982 International Cup Cadet, 782. Lawrence Masters from Rantoul. Got that with that little cart behind it. Oh, then we got the Foster from Paxton, Mac. Russell Foster's Cub, 1979 Cub. Daryl Foster is driving it. Last known Cub manufactured. Pulling an IH Cub two-wheel trailer. Last known Cub manufactured. And it's red. And now look at this thing, the travel all. Oh, I love they this. They just got this thing a oh, couple months ago now. I love this. That is a dandy. 25,000 actual miles. Listen to that siren. 25,000 actual miles on that thing. Wonder if it came out of Pennsylvania, Strasburg? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not Strasburg, Illinois, but Strasburg, Pennsylvania. I figured it was Strasburg, Illinois, but it wasn't. You I checked on that? Yes, I did. 
And I was Osberg just uh, by Stewartson, so that you know, they, the high schools that merged, Stewartson Strasburg, so it's Stu Straws. That's the way they call it. Kevin McMath from Clinton. Preston Carter driving that Model R right there. 1950 Model R. Oh, then we got a 7030 Alice. The Mac B brother from Armstrong with Remy and Bubba. Got a lot of help driving that one. 7030 S. There's a case VAC made in 1946. Cole McNamara, Maryville, Tennessee. Maryville, Tennessee. Not Maryville, Kansas. No, I've been there. You've been there. just there last year. <laughs> the home of Landall Trailers. Here's a 1961 Massey Ferguson model 65 and fully mounted three bottom plow. Bill Hendrickson from Goodfield, Illinois. That's a dandy. Oh, we got a Gibson Model I right here. And if your name is Gibson, you want a Gibson. Model I made in 1949. Larry Gibson owns it. Larry's from over at Perrysville. Larry's dad was a Gibson tractor dealer right there in Perrysville. Ain't that something? They had about four different models. That's a Model I. They made one a little bigger and then a couple of smaller. So there was a Mr. Gibson and there was a Mr. Cockshut. There was a Mr. Cockshut, and we got a 1957 Cockshut Deluxe 20, because it's red and yellow. Drew Hahn from Cox Street, Kentucky. Drew was driving it. The last year, 1957 Deluxe 20 model right there. Boy, those are cute little tractors. This case looks nice, case SC3. Made in 1953, Paul Hamrick from Spring Valley. That's Paul driving it. This was his grandfather's tractor. Then we've got a 1976 Simplicity Broadmoor II with the tiller. Melody Stauffer is driving, it had, owns it, and Calvin is driving, and from Colfax, Illinois. All original. There's another Simplicity. 1991 Simplicity, 12 LTH, James Travis from Colfax. And we've got Mindy Stauffer driving Calvin's 1987 Simplicity with that blade on the front, dual exhaust, little trailer on the back with that checkered flag. Look at this 560. There's a story behind this 1963 Farmo 560. Earl Overbeck of Allegan, Michigan has this tractor. It was found in a backyard with trees growing through it. I guess they left the tree out when they restored it. Some people leave them in. You know, they leave part of the tree in there. There's a Massey Harris over there with the tree still in it by the feature building. 1957 Farmo 350. Ed from Holland, Michigan. Right there, boy, that's a nice 350. International server. Oh, now this one, back. tell us about that. H.V. McKay, Massey Harris. Joe Berkey is the owner from Pekin. It's a model 745S, made in 1957. It's an Aussie Massey. Uh, Pork, uh, Perkins 4.3 motor. It is the 2021 NATPA 7,500 pound class champion. Yes. He got that thing from Australia. Down under. He drove it on top of the water all the way over here, I think. Hey, we got this 1956 Massey. No, just a Ferguson TO 35, a TO 35 Sprague brother from Plainville, Illinois, and Newburgh, Indiana. Mel Sprague is driving the first is new by his dad. Oh, who's driving the David Brown today? Dennis. Dennis Michelson, WITY Radio. AM 980, WITY. This is a 1975 David Brown 885 gas tractor. The model only sold in North America. Oh, it's owned by the Bruns paint shop, John That's at right. Potomac. Yes. 1953 Minneapolis UB 
with a HF pull type combine. Kaden Carter from Clinton, Illinois, driving that thing. Don't you love to see an old combine behind a tractor like that? Yeah, they'd, they'd go out and work there. We'll see some of the Rand Tool, I bet. Jack Gady from Sedoris, 1946 Farm Hall M. Then we got Gary Duff from Marland, Michigan, driving a 1951 BF Avery Model R. Got a BF Avery flag even. There's a co-op, B1. Dale, Canada, from Jasonville, Indiana. It's a 1941 tractor. This was actually built by Clee Track yes. in Cleveland, Ohio. It's the same as a general tractor. They had the same drill and hood and gas tank on them little crawlers like that. They're That's a Clee Track. Yes. Yeah. Then we've got a 1948 BF Avery Model V, as in Victor, Lakeville, Ohio. Brian Young driving that. Got a cultivator on that Model V. That was the smallest Avery they made. Another V behind that. It's a Model V, yes. This is Wendell Schellebarger from Pleasant Hill, Iowa. Wendell, glad you came over east of the Mississippi here. It smokes, but it don't chew. Hey, we got a 1949 BF Avery Model A, Hayden Stone from Deckerville, Michigan, with that two bottom plow. I bet that give that thing a load. Be just about right for that thing in low gear. Here's an Avery A owned by Dwayne and Donna Tricker of Kinsman, Ohio. Dwayne, thanks. Thanks for coming all the way over here from the Buckeye State. Now look at this, where this guy's from. This is 1952 BF Avery, Model V, James Balter from Clayton, North Carolina. Clayton, North Carolina? That's what it says right there. Have you seen that hey, thing James, before? We need to talk. And he drove, you flew. <laughs> Decatur, Michigan <laughs> is the home of this Avery A, made in 1948. Dale Avery has an Avery. Well, how do you like that? You related to the family? McCormick Deering W4, Bob Allman of Greencastle, Indiana has this tractor, made in 1948. Then we've got this 1972 case Black Knight. It's a 19, it's a 970 case pulling that 727 wagon. 1952. Mark Becker's in that wagon there. He's in charge of that American Muscle display over there. Monty Malingas is driving. This tractor was in a tornado in Oklahoma before it was restored. How about that? Uh, G1000 Vista, 1969. Now that's a muscle tractor. That's, that's a, a muscle, muscle tractor. You bet. Mark Becker, Kathy Becker on this tractor, but Riley Lopez, the, uh, their grandson, is driving it. Mark has restored some nice ones over the years, hasn't he? Yeah. Picking a muscle tractor. Another muscle tractor right there. 1970 Alice, 220. Ron Moore from Greenville, Illinois. Ron knows that thing, that nice 220. It's an international 1066. Mark Bergeson of Ransom owns this tractor made in 1974. That was back when they were streaking. Oh, yeah. Remember the streak? The streak. Hey, we got a... Trump down Oliver, 2150, Franklin Gazler from Mount Pulaski driving that thing. I think he just bought that on Ollie Schaefer's sale last month. Tim and Bev Primer of Calhoun, Georgia on this John Deere 730 gas. Look at that John Deere 202H two-way plow. That's a nice combination, isn't it? All the way from Calhoun, Georgia. He's part of the Muhammad Mafia, though. Oh. He's part of that Mafia oh, crew. I'm glad you explained. Yeah, 1950 Minneapolis Z, David Pittman from Decatur. 
That's a Model ZA, actually. Boy, this is just a head turner all the way around. <laughs> High crop LP, 460, made in 1959. Hugh Forbes owns this tractor. And if you say, boy, that must be rare. I've never seen many of them. This is only one of 15. Ain't that something. Or should I say one of only 15? And we got it right behind that, another LP. 1956 W400 LP. Hugh Forbes driving that. There's only one of 42 of those, Max. So we got two rare tractors right there. Something about that LP tank yes, sitting up there. Yes, yes. Here's Casey Allman from Greencastle, Indiana. It's a 1962 560. And we've got right down the road from Collison, Illinois, we got Bob Miles' tractor right here. It's a 2745 Massey V8. Got the 540 V8 in that one. Kyle and Abby Hawkins is driving that. That's a daughter and son-in-law. And uh, just a fresh restoration. Bob, I think Bob Miles' is they brought like 27 Masseys here. 27 tractors anyway. I don't know if they're all massive, but there was a lot of them. Here's a nice looking 504, made in 1964 by International Harvester. Wayne Rumsey owns this farm all. Wayne is from over at Fowler, Indiana. You got the little brother to that, don't you? You got a 404. Yep, so you're, you're the 04 class there. International 404. Yes. Hey, Raleigh Falker from System Park. Raleigh driving in 1951, John Deere A, Cyclone A. Here's a 1965 Massey Ferguson. A sit, wait a minute, let me back up on that. A 65 model Massey Ferguson, made in 1958. Dylan Jansen from Stockland. Is that? On the brush guard on the front there. Who's this guy with the two-cylinder now? Jeff Lanou. Got his straw hat on with pulling a plow. 1950, John Deere G left Jeff Lanou over by La Rab. And he's got the shirt to go with it. Yeah, that John Deere shirt. I asked him where his international shirt was. Take a look at this tractor. You might have seen this last weekend on This Week in Agribusiness, but you didn't see it quite looking like this. Logan Lanou restored it quickly in recent days. This is his granddad's tractor. This 220 made in 1970 and he intended to buy his granddad's tractor. He was gonna ask his grandfather and his grandfather passed away before he could ask him. So he uh, bought it from his grandma and How fixed it up that? just in the past few days, fixed it up in time for this show. Really nice job on that. 220, he painted it in a crib. He's been busy. Then we got John Baum from Appleton, Wisconsin. 1939 Sears and Roebuck kit. You could buy a kit. If you had a Model A engine, you could put this tractor together. And he's got- John's got a bunch of 19 Sears, Sears and Roebuck tractors. Jerry Saul, Hamilton, Michigan. As this, uh, whoops, wait a minute, I jumped ahead. I've got one out of order. Go behind. Uh, you know that. Look at that case. Well, the case is art now. I am going to say. He's from Pitwood, just north of Watsika. I can tell you that. Where's the fan? I want to see the fan. Blow <laughs> the fan. Maybe we'll get to see that at uh, look Grand at that little Massey 130. Boy, now that's a that's special Jerry. little thing. Jerry saw from Hamilton, Michigan. What if that was used in the orchards? It looks it, like an orchard track. It had to be that narrow and that low. Wow. 1963 Massey 50 diesel with that two bottom plow. John Fisher from West Chicago, Illinois. Robert is driving it. You reckon he's plowing very much there in Chicago, West Chicago, or? Maybe that's why the plow is getting a little... You know, there's still a few fields out around West Chicago, not many of them. Boy, this, uh, is that a mini mow? Yes, it is. 
Tom Wilcox, Wabash, Indiana, has this. This will be a Navy tractor. We should salute a U.S. Navy tractor, the Big Bowl 400, made in 1968, I think it is. That's a special one. That's one of those magnets, isn't it? Yeah, they had a magnet on it, and they picked up the uh, FOD on the runway. Yes, that's right. That's that was Steve Hamill on that Massey 65 right there from Champagne. Then we got a Massey Harris four-wheel drive. One of the first four-wheel drives that was really mass produced. Pulling a Massey Harris number 11 manure spreader. Four-wheel drive. That was old back in the morning. Quite the deal. I couldn't figure out what they were doing a while ago. They were picking up magnets. They were putting magnets down in and front of that Navy they, tractor. That's yeah. why that, yes, making the magnet work. That's a neat tractor to have. Yeah. Got some really nice ones here. Oh, gosh, yeah. John Deere A, site another Cyclone A right there. Then we got Jane Beerbaum's tractor, 1945 Farm All B. Caitlin Vickers is driving it. It was restored 25 years ago by Chris Vickers and Dave Beerbaum. Nice to have that umbrella on there. Yes. Of course, it's going to get caught on something. You can count on that. <laughs> yeah. Larry Winkleman on that John Deere 4010 diesel right there from Paxton, Illinois. Just up in Ford County. And then it looks like we got Ronnie back on a 335. Not too many 335 row crops like that. That's one of a few there, I gotta be. Most of them are utility models. Ronnie back from Gibson City. Now we got the Jansen brothers here. From downtown Segal, you go down US 45 on the east side of the downtown Segal, there's the Jansen Brothers garage. The big Minneapolis right there. I told him to drive that thing from Segal. He says it goes two miles an hour. So I said, well, at that rate, it'd be here in about 50 hours. So that'd be a full week's work, wouldn't it? If you would a 40 be. hour a week. They always have some nice equipment at the Half Century Show. Oh, yeah. Then we got Jimmy Walden right there on that Oliver 1850. Been repowered a little bit. Jimmy always has Olivers, and he always had Dodges. So he had to put a Dodge motor in his Oliver. V8 right there. And he... Jimmy Walton pulled an olive radiator with a Chrysler Hemi in there back in the 60s. Really? Oh, yeah, he always had that V8 power. Oh, and then this is one of our good members right here, Jimmy Wood from Sydney driving that Ferguson TO35. TO meant overseas. If it was a TE35, it would have stayed in England. What? It would have stayed in England. Oh, I see. And now it was a TO, so it goes overseas. Then we got a case 2590. Oh, this is Leon Seaford just down the road. Halfway between Penfield and Gifford on the south side of the road. He didn't come far, did he? No. Kurt Jansen right here from, also from Sigel area, right there. Got a farm all B now. He's one of the chapter 10 directors. Got his wife with him. So he has to behave now. Next, next year he can bring his Ford 5000. He's got a Ford 5000 at home yet, so he can bring that. It's gonna be the feature next year, Ford? Yes, so he's got to bring the forward next year. You've heard of Mr. Haney? Yeah, I have, yeah, Mr. Haney, but he's driving a Alice Chalmers. I think his brother-in-law. See, they traded places. They traded places. He had a birthday. He just had a birthday a couple days ago. 
So he must have forgot that he got on the wrong tractor because he got that international hat on and his brother-in-law's got an Alice hat on and they traded places. And you believe that? Holy Toledo, that was Chuck Haney from Toledo, Illinois. Ron Ripkin's driving Chuck's 560. It's really Mary's tractor, it's not Chuck's, it's Mary's, so. Thank you, Ron. Now he had that little seat on the back. I've seen this, uh, this is a stunt tractor, isn't it? Yeah, but usually the box is bigger and more people can get in there and it, Chuck said he kind of ruined that the other day. He's got to fix it first before he brings it back. Well, that looks like that's about it for the parade. And uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out today. We got plenty to do all afternoon. We got all kinds of exhibits, the live activities going. We're going to have tractor pulls tonight. We got plenty of food. We got all kinds of things going. We appreciate everybody coming out today. Come back and uh, tell your friends and neighbors what they're missing today.